We're being joined by Laurie Goring, who is a climate change editor at Context. Ms. Goring, thank you very much indeed for joining us here in Vienna. The question that I want to ask you is this. Now, what are the implications of the rapidly melting Antarctic ice? Well, you can think of this uh, pattern that happens in the Atlantic Ocean as a kind of a conveyor belt that is changing, that is moving levels of carbon absorbed from the atmosphere and levels of nutrients around in the ocean as well as heat. And that's been operating, uh, bringing uh, warm water up in the, the tropical areas and then having that sink down in the northern areas near Greenland and the Arctic. Um, and that drives a lot of useful things that stabilize uh, our climate, our rainfall, our agriculture, and so on. But that is weakening as these big glaciers in Greenland and places like that melt because part of what drives this conveyor belt is the saltiness of the water and more melting fresh water decreases that. So it could impact quite a lot of uh, things that we're worried about from uh, food harvest, rainfall, to things like how severe um, tropical storms are. Absolutely indeed. Now a lot of people think of climate change and of melting ice and they think that the sea levels will go up, a lot of the coastal areas will get submerged, but very few people are aware that this will drastically impact the deep ocean current, currents as they presently exist. Now, you know, try help us understand as to have a collapse of this gradient, the saline gradient in the oceans once the ice begins to melt and once the saline gradient also breaks off, how is this likely to impact the flow of water in the deeper part of the ocean? Well, it'll, it'll shut down this circulation or, or make it go much more slowly and more weakly. And that, that means that it, it, it will affect quite a lot of the systems around that. For instance, um, the oceans won't, right now they absorb a lot of the carbon dioxide emissions that we create from burning coal, gas, and oil. Um, but it's possible that the oceans won't be able to absorb things at the same level if this circulation slows down, which is a big problem because it can accelerate climate change and its impacts. And it's likely because it affects the evaporation of water off the oceans, uh, it's likely to affect rainfall. Right. And that could change rainfall patterns in a lot of parts of the world, including potentially in India uh, and across South Asia, in uh, western parts of Africa, and also in South America. Very interesting. Now, you mentioned that this could in fact impact the you know, rainfall pattern in India, the monsoon winds, of course, blow in a certain manner. How will, you know, the decreased salinity of oceans actually impact the monsoon rains in India? Well, it's hard to tell exactly. Um, you know, this hasn't, this, this change in the ocean circulation pattern has happened in the history, but in tens and tens of thousands of years ago. So we can see some of the, um, the patterns of that. We know that it happens and we know that when it starts happening, it's possible that it will completely change over within decades which is why people are worried about it. Um, but we don't know precisely what, how it's going to affect agriculture and what we're doing now because we, we've never had this many people living on the planet when it happened. All right, very interesting there. Thank you very much indeed, Ms. Goring, for joining us and getting us all those insights there. Thank you.